these from Cycles Render and this one after I use Bokeh Lens. Bokeh Lens, Bokeh Lens, call whatever you want. But if you want to make your render more stand out, follow my lead. Well, this kind of type of thing, you can actually use some Vading Viginet on Photoshop. But imagine if you can make this awesome render uh, from, from Blender. And then you can even like make this cool render twice even more cooler in Photoshop. So just imagine that. And I got this video. I, I actually already know this for like uh, weeks ago, but I just feel like people needs to know this. My like this is insane. So uh, shout out to Thomas Albers uh, for this video. Well, in his video, he explains uh, Cinema 4D and some other, some kind of other rendering this kind of softwares. They really provide the way you can put custom bokeh to to your camera, but Blender not having that yet. I'm gonna put the link below here. Real lens bokeh textures. When once you open that, there's a website where you can download these many types of bokeh lens. Well. I'm just gonna use this simple one, uh, the top one here. I already have a folder of mine where I uh, where I save them, so I'm I'm gonna use that one, which is the first one here. So let's jump into Blender. I'm gonna get my sword. I think you can find you you guys actually can make this sword. Like I showed you guys a tutorial in my channel. So if you go to my channel and then. Uh, I think it's the back here. Go to uploads. Yeah, here. Sci-fi sort in Blender. Uh, it's a it's a tutorial, two hours. Uh, I demonstrate you can make the sort until you render it. So, but the problem is with this type of uh, rendering insanity, you have to do it in cycles, not in EV yet. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe, maybe soon they will provide this kind of custom bokeh. But holy shit, mate! Once I found out about this, I literally cried myself. I was like, "This is insane! You can actually achieve this rendered quality like from Blender, and you can even like make it twice even more cooler in, in Photoshop. It's it's insane." So I'm gonna close that, and I have the scene right. So I have a camera here, right? So I'm gonna jump into my camera, and I'm gonna do the same shot like this, and. <clears throat> This is this is EV, right? This is EV, and because my laptop, kind of cheaper laptop, so please bear with me. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Um, I'm gonna use cycles, and you're gonna like uh, did really bad or takes time to to see the full render, anyway. But I'm just gonna uh, put the render here. It's just 32. Like those pictures that I just showed you, I rendered those with 32 samples. Just imagine that. And make sure that you use the depth of field. So I, I click the camera here. I have the camera, and go to the camera tab here, and make sure that you act, uh, check the depth of field because it's not going to work if you're not going to use the depth of field. So what you're going to do first is you're going to add mesh and add a cube. Once you add a cube, cl click the cube, hold shift, and click the camera. And then once you have it, go to N panel, type N on the keyboard, and then go to Top hit transform and then you can location and um, pick XYZ and right click on one of it and copy all to select it. So it's gonna transfer the cube into the camera and also for, for the rotations, do the same thing, copy all to select it so it's facing like exactly the camera it is. So, like once you're done from here, you can click the camera or I mean, you can click the cube and then camera and then control P. And an object set parent to object and what this does whenever you want to change the camera you can uh, the cube just gonna stay there once you have this you're gonna go here viewport shading and then make sure you click the texture here so you can see the textures while it's in solid view it's important to do that because we're gonna split screen here first once you put your uh, render engine into cycles, you're gonna go to the material and click the cube, right? Make sure you click the cube and click plus new. And then just this for the surface, make it transparent. Click the transparent one here. And then color, click the color yellow here. 
and then pick image texture just right away and then you can try to open that folder of your uh, or find that bokeh pictures of yours I already have mine so I'm gonna import it to this I'm gonna use the first one right this one. so you're gonna go to edit mode go to edit mode here and face and select all A and then uh, wait I forgot oh, uh, put this split screen into UV editor so you first gonna scale these things down just make it small because you just gonna you're not gonna use that you're gonna use this front one click U and then unwrap so once you have this if you go to view camera and then you go to Z uh, wait put this left one into 3d viewport so you could see what's going on Z rendered or you can or you guys could see you now and you guys probably did not see any difference that much of a difference it's okay first find that camera of yours and then click this uh, arrow and then you can hide the cube and then I would like to go using um, wait I'm gonna close this one first I'm gonna play with the depth of field with this material preview here with the material preview here because that's rent mode I'm gonna go with play with the depth of field putting origin here because I'm gonna put a empty there this is how I usually add some depth of field and click the camera and then focus object here depth of field and use that eyedropper and find that empty once you have it uh, click the camera again and then you can play with the f-stop here when you turn it down you're gonna see that blur on the background isn't it isn't that already cool and but you can already make this even more cooler with that vignette fading at the edge of the camera so once you have this uh, just 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 adjust it to what you like it just depends it's 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 your style you know so once you have this okay I feel like okay this is pretty good you can split the screen again and then make this one view just solid view and you're gonna make the cube unhide the cube so you can see the cube again and pay attention to this on the right side uh, on the right screen here so from here you can try to as scale it but try to find the axis that can yeah this i just typed zz but so you can try to x and x a double x and y double y just find that axis that you're gonna be like this so once you have this you're gonna try to pay attention on the right screen you're gonna try to make that circle inside your camera so once it's inside the camera you can try to put the right screen one into the rendered view rendered view go to rendered view so you so you could see what's going on so you would see that look so dreamy right but it's way too small like you only like see uh like a couple percent like 10 percent of your rendered camera okay so once you have it like that if you try to scale it uh, just scale it like don't touch Z X on what or Y don't touch it just scale it normally the more you scale it down the more you're gonna lose that cinematic view so you can try to adjust that and you guys could see it's very blurry I'm um, working on my laptop it's I forgot I'm gonna make this view port into just 10 so it would be like um, more faster I guess uh, I would use the denoising, but sometimes it crash. <laughs> it's just my laptop thingy. <laughs> so you already have this. I'm gonna go full screen, which is control space. You could do that. Yeah, you could. You could already see like uh, from from what from a bigger picture here. Like it's still it's already look good. I mean once you render it oh my god you guys can see like this on the left side and then the right side it's fading right what you could do for that i'm not sure if it's allowed to do this i mean <laughs> i mean you can do it i mean i'm not sure if it's a proper way to to do it but 
um, scaling it on let's see like if it's like this I'm gonna scale it on X axis like that and make it full screen like that but it's gonna you're gonna uh, transform the, the circle into some kind of ellipse there I'm not sure if it's a good idea but I feel like I mean I did that <laughs> and yeah so you got uh, so you're gonna get a full type of book of lens here I mean, it's already looked pretty good. You you haven't rendered it, so for render it for a composite thing, I'm just gonna use uh, normal composite thing. Mm, click use notes here, and then I'm gonna click a denoise. All right, of course you're gonna use denoise. And don't forget to go to the few late properties and active denoising data, and then find that denoise. Okay. You put there in between, and then you put the denoising de normal there, and then connect the denoising albedo, and also don't forget to add glass because cycle has no bloom effect. You had you had, you need to add it from the compositing. Um, make it fog glow, and maybe size to seven. I guess that's it. What I need to do, and let's just hit render then. Okay, so it took me in a minute 20 seconds This is only 30 samples. So, so you can make it like 128 or even more samples just depends on what you like but with only 32 samples Just take a look at this goddamn rendered. This is amazing mate Like it may it makes the render like more focus on the mill or whatever that is that that you're trying to focus I really love that vignette on um, of fading black um at the edge of the screen you know and that's just really cool to me i mean you can get that from photoshop but imagine if you can already have this from a render software and then you can make it even more cooler in photoshop like twice so that's just amazing yeah i mean just look at that just just look at that it's it's a little tame and if you compare this with with the one here it just it, it just very normal. Right? It just very normal. I mean, you can use these two types of render. It just depends on what you after, right? Again, so if you like, if you want to like have some thumbnails, a really cool thumbnails, just trying to um, post a a really cool standout render, for a quick sneak peek. You gonna you try to use this one? Oh my god! I mean, this is gonna be like so damn awesome though. So I guess that's all pretty much for this video, so thank you guys for watching.